Hey, this is Rich over at TVP Live with another Quick Tips Tutorials brought to you by Adobe Photoshop Elements Tutorials Group. And let's jump into today's poster who wants to know how to cut out a subject and not have this little white line on the edge. So obviously this photo was a complete photo with its own background and the poster cut out the background and I'm not sure if the poster used the polygon tool or the magic tool or some other filter effect. So what we're going to do is show you why this happens. And you can see as I zoom in, there's a white line along the edge. The reason is, is that when you use the magic tool, it knows what the edge is, but it doesn't know whether to cut in or out of the edge, depending on the tolerance down here, the percentage. And that leaves you a white lined edge like that. I'm going to go ahead and use my own photo. And as we zoom in, this is its natural background. And as we zoom in, you see the same pixelated areas. But look at the edge here. Do you see that? It isn't a hard line defined edge. So when you use the magic tool, it's trying to create a hard line edge where look up here, you really can see it's not a hard line edge at all. So if I go ahead and let's say change the tolerance here to, I don't know, 5%, I'm gonna click on the white and you can even see what's happening. As soon as I hit delete, boom. This is obviously not what you want, and it's leaving you that white line edge like your other photo did. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that, and let's try something else. Let's do the same thing using the magic tool, but change the tolerance to, I don't know, let's say like 100%. I'm going to click in here and I can see where the problem's happening already is that it's cutting in too far a hard edged line and look down here when I hit delete. Yep, we cut some of the ear off. So it's kind of hard to use that particular tool. As you can see when we zoom in, the edge looks really jaggedy sharp. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. In our case, <clears throat> what we want to do, it takes a little bit uh, longer to do this, but I'd use the eraser. And then I would erase along the edge, but not with a sharp eraser brush, but a soft one. So when I go to brushes right here, you see the default brushes. All these are hard edged. You can see the edges here. But then there's a whole set of soft edge brushes, different size brush heads. So I'm going to take something like, uh, let's say, 5%. I'm going to zoom in here. And I think that's going to be a little bit small. So I'm going to change that 5 to like... 10% and watch this. I'm going to get rid of two problems with one stroke as I erase here. I got rid of the green and I'm getting rid of the background along the edge. And what happens is that because it's a soft edge and you can, you, why, how do you know it's a soft edge? Because look at its original edge. It's not hard. It's soft. All we're doing is recreating a new soft edge just in slightly into the actual photo to hide that white line. Now I'll just continue doing the whole rest of the photo. Now, as soon as I get down to some skin tone, the lines get a little bit harder than they were on the hair. So now I can come down here and change this from 10 point to five point. It makes it a smaller brush, which will be a slightly sharper, but yet it's still a soft brush. As you can see down here, we're choosing the five point within the soft brush choices. And there we go. Now we were able to cut him completely out and still left the edges a little bit soft, which is the natural lineage of an actual photograph. Now we want to do is get rid of the background manually with the polygon tool. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And like I said before, this does take a little bit longer, but if your subject matter and your project calls for perfection, this is what you want to do. And your clients will notice you for it and you'll get hired again and again. And I'm basically cutting out in between the subject matter and the background, making sure that I leave that soft edge alone. I don't want to touch either one. I want this to be smack in the middle. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and close this polygon tool. Come over here, come back over to the left here where I started. Double click, I'm going to zoom out. And you can see the jaggedy ants lines around where I'm going to delete. I hit delete and boom, it's gone. Let's go ahead and borrow the background from our posters original, this uh, teal green. So I'm going to go ahead and with the eyedropper, 
grab that teal green, come back to our current photo. Let's go ahead and add a new layer. And this is <clears throat> really important to make it its own layer. I'm going to go ahead and hit the uh, paint bucket and go ahead and fill it in. Of course, it fills in on top of everything. Why? Because it's the top layer. Let's go ahead and drag that to the bottom. Boom. And this is how I'll, I'll save the photo. That way I can take my subject matter and move them around any way I want. And I can make it bigger or smaller if I wanted to. Whatever my heart's desires. And this way I can even change the background to something else if I want. And ultimately, as you can see, there's no white line going around. If I zoom in, you can see there's a little bit of a greenish tinge, and that's basically the yellow mixing with the teal is giving us that kind of a different green. How do we know? Let's go ahead and change the background from green to black. Take the uh, paint bucket, fill it in, and there you go. The green is gone. And now it's a nice, soft line without any white lines. And it looks more natural and like the original photograph. And that's it for this tutorial. This is Rich, calling it quits, saying over and out.